So here's a working prototype or another variant of the auto strife using these commonly available Arduino gearbox. These are for Arduino droids, or that's how they're commonly used. These gearboxes, uh, they're available for maybe two, three bucks included with the stock motor. And I've seen four of these going for about $12 delivered. So the main thing about it is that you can get them on Amazon, you can get them on eBay, and uh, they're already in country. Whereas the kits that are on Taobao, uh, you're going to have to order those from China. So it's a little more accessible to get these. And while the Taobao kit usually comes pre-wired, which makes it very easy to install, this is just an alternate way of uh, getting that automatic strife. So you can see we got a lot of hot glue in here, but that's because, again, this is just a working prototype. The only parts that are really custom here, it's the, uh, the rack gear, as you can see here, and this pinion gear which has uh, about two-thirds of the teeth removed. So you need to make sure that they line up. This is kind of one of the things that they figured out with the Taobao kit. And you're going to see that with this five-tooth gear, here is the alignment that allows it to function properly. So out of all the little tweaks and experimentations with this setup, this right here is probably the most important thing. you'll see that you can actually get the gears to stop in the extended mode, which is not really what we want because that's going to keep the next round from popping in. But uh, without adding some sort of fire control mechanism, or not mechanism, I should say, um, like an Arduino, this is just kind of the primitive way of doing it. No uh, special sort of uh, electronic speed controller, nothing like that. The way that you tune the speed is by changing the motor out. So with this, this is a hyper fire stock motor. Um, for the flywheels, not for the pusher mechanism. Those are those are fatter. This gives you about five to six rounds per second, which is slow. But uh, the thing is that a lot of people have complaints with the the Tabao kit is that the rate of fire was a little too fast. So with something like this, it's very easy to snap off one round. So obviously, you can get a faster rate of fire by changing the motor into something else, any kind of 130 motor, even 180s will fit. But if you want to use a 180 motor, then what's going to happen is it's going to be longer. So if we take a 180 motor and we try and stick it into the gearbox, what you'll have to do is push the gearbox over and it might actually interfere with the, well, if you maybe ran to the very edge, you might be able to get it to fit in there. And then you're going to see that the alignment is off, so the teeth on the rack gear are going to have to run all the way to the end of the pusher, to the pusher bar. So, and uh, really the only reason for using these 180 motors is if you want to have a uh, like a 10, 10 to 14, 10 to 15 rounds uh, per second, which again is going to give you that uncontrollable rate of fire without some sort of electronic fire control system. So the simplest way of doing it is simply drop in the appropriate 130 motor that gives you the rate of fire that you want. So this is a very simple, primitive way of doing it. Now the circuit itself is relatively simple. So we have the standard, which if you are rewiring a strife using the high amperage battery and using the single switch, uh, no motor braking, then uh, the difference is it's going to be how you wire in this the second switch here, which is controlling the pusher mechanism. So in tandem. So we take a look at how the switch is wired. This bottom one, positive, positive. This is going to the positive lead of the battery and the positive lead on the flywheels. The difference here is with this second switch, you can see we go from calm to the normally open. And then from here, we have a negative going to the negative terminal of the motor. And you're going to have to do a little polarity check to make sure that it's spinning in the counterclockwise direction to push the rack gear. Once you have that determined, then uh, negative pole, if it was the other way around, we flip the motor around, then it would be on the top terminal. 
and the positive terminal is going to the common. What you can't see is the negative lead going from the normally closed, and that is spliced into the XT60, the negative terminal on the XT60 connector. So when we flip this thing around, this is one of the big limitations of the Taobao kit, is that uh, if you cut out the battery tray, which is a pretty common modification for people that are using LiPos, the bracket that it comes with will no longer fit. So when you flip this thing around, you can tell that the battery tray on this one has indeed been chopped out, that it is being powered by a 2S LiPo. If we take a look in here, we can see how the fitment looks. This little skinny wire here, that's the negative terminal coming off of the normally closed. Yes, we have a little bit exposed. Um, the better way of doing it, obviously, is to solder them at the same time. I'd probably have two wires running in parallel, but this was essentially a modified circuit from a previously semi-automatic setup. So this is the main advantage of doing a custom job like this, is that uh, this will actually work with your 2S LiPos in terms of fitment. Yes, you can do a uh, aftermarket battery cover or a 3D printed battery cover, but um, if you want to use the stock battery tray and the tray cover with minus... Uh, all of the structural support, the ribs here. You can see that uh, if you want to consider it an advantage, if you're going for a more stock flat look, everything tucks in nicely. In terms of the parts that you're going to need to print out, this rack gear is, uh, that's custom. And you can see that it has to be long to extend out so that it can meet with the pinion gear. Pinion gear, uh, again, you're just doing teeth matching. So, five teeth on the rack gear, five teeth on the pinion gear. And ideally, you want to have the same number of teeth, but it's not necessary. The main reason why I want to keep it shorter is to reduce the amount of engagement time. See, if we had this thing going too long, then it would be easier for the pinion gear to recatch on the rack gear, which is what we're trying to avoid. So you'll get more of less of this and more of this. So the more teeth that you have on here, the greater the chance of it being caught with the pusher mechanism in the extended position. Again, there are ways of getting around that by using an uh, electronic controller, but this is the caveman approach to doing a full automatic strife. So the gear you're going to have to modify so that it fits onto the output shaft. So you're going to have to take measurements with your calipers to get the width to get the diameter and to shave off these ends and then that'll push it right onto the output shaft and the only other modification custom part here which needs to be expanded eventually is this L-shaped bracket and what this does is it keeps it in place now because there's so much vibration with this that's what all the hot glue is for is to keep it from rattling free you get a little bit of friction fit when you screw the thing together but uh, it is still possible to rattle things apart when you're engaging the automatic mechanism. Now this is kind of one of the advantages that you have with the Hyperfire conveyor belt automatic system as opposed to a geared type pusher mechanism. It's the uh, noise and the vibration and rattling. So conveyor belts, while they have their problems, they are a lot smoother than these pusher types. One other little minor modification here is uh, you should be able to see it right there. That's a little bit of silicone. 
And what that does is it reduces the slap when the pusher slaps back into position. So without that, it's it's a lot noisier. It sounds like a, a little bit like a typewriter as it's clacking away. In terms of fitting the switches, this kind of configuration is something that's nothing really new. If you take a close look here, we can see that the trigger, the stock trigger, directly engages the micro switch button. So no lever, no lever um, required here. And the travel is very short. So that can be considered to be a plus or a negative depending on your preferences. But uh, it does allow for pretty decent trigger control.